بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم so alhamdulillah we finished the unit 2 section the part 1 of unit 2 where we learned some linguistic rules of derivation so before we move on any further we're just going to take one or two ayah in each lesson and just quickly recap and try to get an understanding we're not becoming much tahid we're not going to make your own rules up just to understand some terms and how this term applies to some of the texts okay Can ready for next? I'm not going to go through the revision. We've already covered that quite in detail in the previous lesson. So let's look at a few words in here. Okay, we have a verse here. We have the verse. ولا تصلي على أحد منهم مات أبدا ولا تقوم على قبره. So what we want to do here is we have a Quranic verse. So in terms of so what's this? Okay, let's be very very dope. Let's pretend we don't know anything. What is this I have in front of me? What is this? This is a Quranic verse. Correct. You guys carry along with me. Yes, you have a Quranic ayah. So, is this a dalil or not a dalil for anything? Okay. It will be a dalil. It's a Quranic verse. It's going to be a dalil. In terms of the establishment of this dalil, in terms of its thubut, is it qat'i or is it dhanni? What does qat'i mean? That would be a sh- Yeah, we are definite that this are the words that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited to the companions and they have to pass on to the Ummah which we believe was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the angel Jibreel. We have the Qat'i, we have no doubt in any of these words. So therefore, now, we now have to analyze. So is this a, is this a linguistic evidence or non-linguistic evidence? What's the primary purpose, a primary source of this evidence? Is it linguistic or non-linguistic? It's linguistic, it's a dalil lavdi. So therefore we have to apply some of the, well all the rules, but we only know some rules. So we will apply some of the rules that we have learned regarding dalil lavdi. So we do istilah lavdi, the qawaid al istimbat al lavdiya. Yes? So let's start here. And the first word. Wala tusalli. Okay, let's translate it first. Wala tusalli ala ahadim minhum mata abadan. And do not do salah on one from them who has died ever, do not stand on his grave. I'm just doing like a very weak translation. So we don't have any biases towards what it means. We're just trying to say, well, how do we analyze this? Yes? Okay. So, the word to salli, what kind of word is this in terms of sarf? What, what kind of, what is this? La to salli. This is a nahyun. Correct. Now, when we have a nahyun or we have a khas, sorry, we have an amrun or a nahyun, These words are made up of two elements. What are you made up of? Two elements. What are the two elements? One element is the sigha. And one element is the ma'na, ma'na al-jidri, or the ma'na al-huruf al-asli. So in this word, wala tusalli, we have to look at two things. We learn two things. We learn one thing from the sigha, la tusalli, لا تفعل لا تدرب لا تسمع لا تزني لا تشرب الشراب yes لا تشرك so the sigha has one meaning what's the sigha whenever you have a nahi forget what the word is what does a nahi mean what does a nahi necessitate what does a nahi mean see year one remember a long time ago in year one we've done this prohibition so we know from and this is, this is the haqiqi meaning this is the haqiqa this is the haqiqi And literal meaning of a nahyun. Yes, when you say a nahyun, the literal meaning is to do what? Not do the thing that you've been told to do. And then the second one is the word, the root letters. What's the root letters in here? Sad, lam, and ya. Okay. Is the sira wadih or ghayr wadih? The sira. Not the, not the root letters, the, the sira. What would you classify the sira as? One of the wadih words or ghayr wadih words, known or unknown words, clear or unclear words? Yeah, because everybody, yes, very good. It's clear, why? Because the Arabs knew before Islam, before the Prophet, that when you have a nahi, the haqiqi meaning of a nahi is to abstain from the thing that you've been told to do. Now the word salah, what do you think it is? Is it wadih or ghayr wadih? Originally, before the Prophet's explanation, what do you think it is? The word salah or salah, ya salah, what do you think it is? Why is it ghayr wadih? Yes. So the word salah was not known to them. So what kind of word is this going to be? What kind of ghayr wadi? Is it mushkil? Is it khafi? Mutashabih? Mujmal? What is it going to be? 
What do you think is going to be? It is mujmal. If there was no bayan, what would this mujmal have become? If there was no clarification explaining what the word salah means, what would it have been for us? It would have been a mutashabi. But we have a bayan. So what does salah mean now? Salah, we know what salah means, correct, prayer, we know what it means. So this before, so now, so now it moves over and it becomes what? What does it become? Wow, the unclear. We know what the word la tasalli means. You got it? Okay. Now, we have ala, ala is a harfunjar. Harfunjars have lots of meaning and they have lots of potential for fiqhi discussions. We'll do that in Surah Shashi and maybe if we get to know why I don't know, but we'll do it in Surah Shashi, inshallah. We have the word ahad. We have the word ahad. Next word we have is ahad. Is it wadi or ghair wadi? When you say the word ahad, do you know the meaning of ahad? Not know the meaning of ahad. Is it wadi or ghair wadi? What do you think? It's wadi. When you know the meaning of a word, what do you have to look at next level? Is it am or is it khas? Is it am or is it khas? What do you think it is? What do you think? Is it am or is it going to be am or is it going to be khas? Is it referring to one member? Is it applied to one member or multiple members? Or the entire group, the entire category? Wait. Yes, this is going to be arm. This is wadi. We say this is wadi, this is arm. Yes? Why? Because when you have a nakira word, this is a rule from Arabic, nakira word, in a negative context, it means no one. If I say, La la, if I say, La taktu shay'an, that means don't write anything at all. You can't write anything. If you write anything, you've broken my, my, my command. So, La taktu shay'an, don't write anything at all. So, now we know this. What is this? This is a uh, arm. Now, we don't know if it's arm. So, what, how many types of arms are they? Well, how many types of arm are they? Which two? Am ghair maqsus and am maqsus. Now, we don't, is this maqsus or ghair maqsus? Can you tell from this verse? Yeah, well, it's ghair maqsus. Yeah, we don't have any evidence. So, based on this verse alone, if we have no more evidence, we will say here. Now, min hum, min hum, in some places, not here, but in some places, a hum can be mushkil. Why can't it mush? Why think it's mushkil sometimes the, the, the zamir? Yeah, because sometimes ambiguity is referring to this marja or that marja. You can have multiple possibilities. So sometimes the marja, marja is mushkil. But here we know it refers to the munafiqun. So it's not really going to be an issue. Okay? Uh, and then here it means, here's here, it has mata. As mafum than the as yet. Okay, let's move on to the word abadan. How would the word Abadan influence the sentence? How would Abadan... Okay, so we've done... We've done... We've done... Initial, we've done... Um, uh, okay, let's leave Abadan for now. Or... No, let's, let's leave Abadan for now. We know Abadan means a khas word. Yes? It's a wadih. And it's, it has a one... It has, it's Abadan, it has a known meaning. It's wadih. We know what the word means. La taqum. Is, what is this? La taqum. What kind of word is La taqum? It's a nahi again. So now we have two meanings, two, two aspects. One is the sigha, which means it's impermissible, and the sigha, the word is uh, qiyam. What does qiyam mean? What does qama yaqoma mean? To stand. Right? So is that, is that, uh, is that, uh, so qiyam is a, is a word, we know this meaning, it's a wadih word, it know its meaning. But in a wadih word, what do you have to look at sometimes as well? Is it haqiqa? Is it majaz? Do not stand on his grave. What do you think this is? Haqiqa? Is it majaz? What does haqiqa mean? Haqiqa. So is this haqiqa? Is, is, the, is this haqiqi word or is it a majaz word? And why? Tell me. Is it haqiqa? Is it majaz? What do you think it is? Hmm? Pardon me? Literally, what does La Taqum Ala Qabrihi mean? Do not stand on his grave. 
What does la taqum literally mean? La taqum. Hmm? What do you think? Stand. Is that the meaning or is it something else that's a meaning? That Allah telling Prophet Allah not to do. Pardon me? Don't, don't stand at his grave and pray. So is that haqiqah majaz? It's majaz. Yeah, because the, 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 the ruling is not don't stand there. The ruling is something a bit more. Stand there and pray. Make dua on his grave. Not, not to him, but for him. If a person has died on Nifa, do not, do not make dua for him. You follow me? And yeah, okay. Now, we've done analysis, individual analysis, isn't it? We've done kalima. We look at all the kalima, individual words. Now, in terms of um, the, okay, we have it. What's the nas of this text? What's the nas? What's the nas in this, of this verse? What does nas mean? The purpose the text has been brought. Ruling, ruling of a janaza of a munafiq. Okay. Okay. What is isha from the okay? Uh, so that's that's a nas and that's ibaratun nas. From the isharatun nas, can you see any isharatun nas meaning? Any isharatun nas meaning? What does isharatun nas mean? Some meanings that are not mentioned, not objective, but you can derive. What do you think you can derive from this? Okay, we stop there. We can do after salah, inshaAllah. So let's continue. Bismillah rahman rahim So we said the nas of this text, the reason this text has been brought is to show us the ruling of a salah on, of janazah on the munafiq. Isharatun nas. Is there anything from isharatun nas you, would, you can derive from this? If the Prophet, Allah said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not perform salah upon those who have died as a munafiq. What do you think this kind of like automatically kind of implies that like you understand from this ishara towards what? What do you think, ishara? I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, as obviously you have mafumu khalid, etc., etc. But just for us beginner level, we can, say, well, we can also say, well, if the Prophet is telling, if Allah said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not perform on tho- that person, that means that janaza was mashru, isn't it? Janaza, al janaza was atun. Meaning, it was performed on other people. That's why the Prophet performed. You get it? Why would, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Prophet not to perform salah upon a munafiq unless he was performing for other people? Do you understand? You get it, Shardun Nas, what I'm saying? That like the only way you can, the, the only reason Allah would have told the Prophet not to perform salah upon a munafiq was if he was performing for other people. So then you have to say, well, that this is the ishaat al nas, that salat al janazah is mashru'ah. It is a mashru'ah, meaning it is something that Allah has put a part of religion. That's, so ishaat al nas, we can derive that. And one, what does dalat al nas mean? So nas, or ibarat al nas, we say ibarat al nas. The ibarat al nas, and ishaat al nas, and dalat. What does dalat al nas mean? Uffin and what happens in there? In those two? In the, what's the, the Latin Nas? Who can remember? Explain quickly. The Latin Nas is what? The Latin Nas is a meaning which is understood from the text very obviously. So if I ask you, I can tell you, the, I'll just give a small hint. Salatul Janaza. If I ask you to prove the ruling in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the ruling of performing salatul janazah on a munafiq. A person who pretends to be a Muslim or shows that he's a Muslim, whilst in reality he's not a Muslim. So it's not permissible. So what's the ruling of a mushrik who openly says, I don't believe in Allah, or he ascribes partners to Allah, or he's an open a disbeliever, so I don't believe in Allah. What's the ruling of that? How did you prove it's impermissible? Or what, what method of Islam did you use? Yeah, we would say that what? We would say that if a munafiq who shows Islam 
you can't pronounce, you can't perform salah for him, then obviously, even more, a person who's an open disbeliever, you can't perform salah for him. That's obvious. So the Rat Nas will tell us that performing salah on a mushrik or a kafir is not permissible. Understood? Yes? Okay. Now let's look at the whole text. Is this whole text open to interpretation, open to abrogation or open to abrogation? Is the text open to abrogation? Is it possible? Obviously, it's muhkam li ghayrihi, definitely, isn't it? The Prophet has passed away. No ruling has come contrary to this. So therefore, it's muhkam li ghayrihi because the Prophet has passed away. Yes, is that clear? However, in this verse, is there any additional wording which tells us that even in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, uh, this rule will not have been abrogated. Is there anything that tells us this? Yeah. So the word abadan from the onset tells us that when, when, when the word was, when this verse was revealed, from that very point, this was muhkam bidatihi. In itself, Allah, we knew from this text that there will, be, there will be no, there will be nothing to change this rule. Allah said abadan. This rule is a permanent rule. Never ever perform salah upon any of the mushrikun who have died as who have died. And do not make dua at their graves. Understood? You see how deep this is one text. And how much things we have to understand. We haven't even analyzed everything. We just learned, we just, this is the rules that we have used so far. Do you understand? Is that clear to everybody? So yeah. So this is as deep. This is very this is a good example. We'll do another one inshallah tomorrow. And we'll see, uh, then we can go ahead inshallah. Let's get, let's get an idea to recap the information in your mind inshallah. Okay. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anda wa nasaghfiru kama natubu ilayk.